How's it going, Teal Boys? Today, we've got something a little bit different. Uh, as most of you know, at the beginning of our newest season of our Teal Boys Dynasty, we brought in and built, I should say, a new stadium for the team that now seats up to 85,000 fans. So today, uh, I'm going to show you guys how you can kind of build your own stadium in NCAA 14 or CFB revamped. Now, this isn't perfect. There's only so much that you realistically can do. But if you're looking for a little bit of immersion, either with a team builder team or with a certain way that you're rebuilding a school, this can help add to that quite a bit. Now, right off the bat today, we're going to be using one of two tools. Uh, it just kind of depends on personal preference as to what you choose. We're either going to be using the NCA 14 utility tool made by the CFB revamped team uh, and using the DB editor in it, or we're going to be using the generic EA DB editor that will be combined with Zan's uh, NCA 14 dynasty configuration. Uh, links to both of these will be down in the description and just right off the bat so we can make things clear. None of this is uh, my own creations. Uh, I've done some research to search through tons of forums to find the info I'm going to present, but I was not the one that originally discovered that. So I will post some links to uh, forum threads where I found the information uh, that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. So to start, we're going to have to load in our dynasty file. I've gone ahead and made a test one with the ducks because that's what we do. Uh, this will be the same USR data file that we use when we are changing the playoffs or any sort of the other uh, edits that you're used to making. So it'll be in the same spot um, for us. Uh, it's that dev, hard drive, zero, home, bunch of zero, one, save data, and then you find your exact save. In this case, I just didn't bother naming it. So it's default one. And then again, USR data. So we'll load that either into our uh, database editor or we can load the same file into the uh, Dynasty tool. Both of these will take a little bit of time to uh, completely load in the data. On this one, you know it's done when all the uh, little loading circles are gone. And it's on the uh, EA data database editor. It takes a little bit longer, uh, but you'll know it's done because it'll show the columns and rows filled with information. So now that the files are loaded into both editors, let me go ahead and show you uh, where the two tabs that we'll be working on are on each of them. Uh, there's more that you can do, but for the purposes of this video, these are the two spots that we'll be looking. In the EA database editor, we will go to team data and then the teams tab uh, is just the one that we'll need. And then we will also need the places and stadiums tab uh, where we can find our odds and stadium or whatever uh, team you are deciding to work on. Uh, alternatively, in the utility tool, we can take this scroll bar and go all the way to the end where we will see a team tab, which is the same one as the team data one that we had had previously. And then we will have an STAD or what I call the stadium tab. Uh, and then we can know it's the right one. We'll scroll over and we can see Oregon is right here. Now, the first column that we're going to be editing is the STAA column. Uh, this is the one that decides what stadium is around your football field. So, for instance, right now we have the Oregon Stadium, which would load in Odson. Uh, if we put uh, Boise's then it would give us Boise Stadium. If we put in USC XXX, it would give us the Coliseum. Uh, so we're going to start this one off with a generic one. And this is the same stadium that we are currently using for Coastal Carolina. So we're going to go with GNRIC1. Uh, I don't know if it matters if you have it all capitalized, but I would recommend that you do just to avoid any problems. You want to be as consistent as possible. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go with generic one. And that's going to change our stadium from Odson now to a different stadium. We would go, we hit save and hit OK. Uh, if you're going to have your RPCS3 open like I do currently, uh, you want to make sure that you are on the main menu when you make those saves, not inside a dynasty file. Uh, and if you're on an Xbox, well, then you're most likely going to have to be moving back and forth anyway. So it's not going to be a big hassle to 
go back to the main menu or same with the PS3. Just be at the main menu when you save a change or load in a change. And we'll go ahead and load into the game and take a look at some stadium changes. So we are in Autzen Stadium. And now as we make all these changes uh, throughout the video in the top left, the very top line is going to be the column that you're going to be editing to make the change. Uh, and then directly underneath that will be what you put into that column and in parentheses will be uh, what it changes or how it changes to. So we are in Autzen Stadium. Uh, we can see it's just is what it is. It's Autzen Stadium. Nothing too special there. Um, just wanted to give a frame of reference. And then as we transition, the first stadium that we are going to change to is the generic one or GNRAC one, which is the generic pro style stadium. Uh, that's currently what we are using with Coastal Carolina. Uh, again, uh, it just looks like a, a pro style stadium. So it's very cool that it's possible to add this in. Uh, the next one is the generic two, which is the bowl style stadium. Uh, again, I've used this in uh, dynasties in the past, North Main State uh, and Gorge University, both uh, just a simple bowl style stadium. It's very cool uh very classic um we next move to high school stadiums now these could be incredibly useful if you are say uh well trying to do some sort of rebuild like for us we're saying oh well the program basically is bankrupt and we're starting from scratch so we would want a small stadium like this uh in this instance this is a large northeastern part of the country high school that's just what the game considers it uh, kind of just based off of, I think, typically the buildings and the foliage. Uh, but this one would potentially work well for uh, a smaller school that's like maybe academically focused. Our next stadium is the uh, medium-sized Northeastern High School. Just smaller, has a nice track around it, small bleachers on both sides. Big parking lots, though. Um, but... It just, you know, if it fits the vibe that you're going for with the school that you're looking to modify, then that would be uh, perfect. And again, I like it because you can choose one of these small ones and then just build up as your team progresses. Uh, we go to the small Northeastern High School. It's kind of interesting that they have so many Northeastern High Schools, but uh, this one, nice fall colors. Uh, trees are beautiful and it's definitely smaller. Again, with a track around it, but not a whole lot of bleachers. The next one will be the first Northwestern High School. This is the medium one. I personally have used this one in the past if I knew that I was going to switch to a bowl style stadium next because it's like a, a horseshoe and you can see there's like the beginnings of a bowl there. It's a decent size. So that's what I've used it for. I think it's a cool stadium. Uh, it's just a little underutilized with the space and you've got the beautiful water backdrop as well. After that, we have the small Northwestern High School, which is just hills somewhere apparently in the Northwest. Uh, and it's a very small school. Small school, small field. Uh, decent sized bleachers though. So, you know, maybe that's the one that fits for you. Uh, a lot of the things won't change, like with team colors. Like there's a bunch of red in there, even though we're a green and yellow team. But that's just how it works. Now this is the modern one with a large southeastern high school uh very cool blue track very much in the middle of the city palm trees all that i'm not certain but i think that the colors of the awning would change based off of your team colors um but again i'm not certain about that uh so that's our start of the southeast then we go to the medium southeast and this one i think is claimed to be in like tuscaloosa or something by the game but uh, again just a little bit smaller very tropical feeling there's water in the background there's plenty of palm trees uh you could definitely get away with putting a team in the south in this stadium uh absolutely no problem the only problem is there's just not a whole lot of bleachers next one is our large southwestern high school it is raining in this clip that i got but you'll have to believe me that it's in the southwest of the country uh, this is funny because it's the large one, but there's not really a whole lot there. Um, and it's right next to a high school. Decent size high school. You could pass that off as part of a college. Uh, but again, 
Just uh, all these changes are so cool to me. This one you guys will recognize most likely as the home of the Dingoes. Uh, but it is just the small Southwest High School. Uh, I guess we could call it Death Valley though. Uh, kind of middle of nowhere, little bit of infrastructure in the back in a small school, very limited on the amount of bleachers. And again, you've got a track surrounding the stadium. Uh, uh, this is a very cool one. It's just very unique, which is what I like about it. Next, we move to the Midwest. This is the larger of the two Midwestern high schools. A lot of uh, school stuff behind it. A lot of other sports fields all around it. Um, feels like there's a lot going on. You're obviously in a pretty big town. And it just could be probably passed off as anywhere in the country. Uh, decent amount of bleachers. Just a, a solid looking field all around. Not much to say about it. Uh, a lot of parking though. So that's good news, I guess. And then here's this one. The small Midwest one, which is kind of what you would expect. Surrounded by what we're going to call cornfields. So don't tell RBT that this is a uh, stadium that he could pick because uh, he just should not be around that much corn. Uh, <laughs> very small on the bleachers. You've got the track uh, surrounding it. Only a four-lane track, surprisingly enough. That's how small of a school it is. Uh, baseball field, parking lots, and school. No other infrastructure. And then we move to practice fields. This is your defense's practice field. If you were to go into the practice mode and play like practice defensive stuff, this is the one that you would be on. The empty field here to the left is where the offensive one will be. It just doesn't load in at the same time. Um, it would be interesting to choose this as your team stadium, but it is an option. Uh, and you could, I don't know, maybe send your rival. This is the offensive one on the other side. We're closer to the buildings, um, but further away from that tunnel on the left. And again, now the defensive practice field just doesn't load in, which is kind of funny, but I get why, uh, you know, hardware limitations and whatnot. Uh, this is my preferred of the two practice fields, but then we go uh, after this to the full on practice facility. And the practice facility is uh, big. It's in the middle of campus. It's got a full track surrounding it it feels like it could be part of a small campus uh it even has a couple of bleachers a home section and away section so uh this one would be up here for me if i was choosing to like restart a program or maybe you're doing like a division two team builder um but pretty solid again sta is what you're editing and this is actually where we have landed <laughs> with the uh with the duct we are moving them into uh the kibby dome uh, Idaho, unfortunately, no longer part of the game thanks to the CFB revamped mod. So, uh, well, let's just move the ducks there temporarily and allow the stadium to see some use. It looks so weird to see it like this, but uh, that's what it is. So again, that is the STAA tab. Uh, again, you would just edit that to whatever one of those options that you saw, or you can scroll through the list of other schools and pick another team stadium. Uh, you could pick a bowl, you could do all sorts of weird stuff. I don't know necessarily why you would choose another team stadiums, because as we saw with the Kibbe Dome, uh, they're going to have the other team stuff plastered all over it. So, uh, that stuff, unfortunately can't really be changed unless somebody figures out a way to mod, uh, the 3d models in the game, which uh, I haven't seen that as being thought of as, uh, completely possible yet. So that is the, uh, STA tab. We're going to move from the STAA tab uh, quite a ways to the right here until we find the SGPT one. This is our goalpost type. Uh, so we have it set at three currently. Oregon starts at two. So let me go ahead and load in with Oregon's um, original one. And you'll see what the options are and what you would change this three value to in order to change what your goalposts look like. So here we have what Oregon defaults to and a lot of teams do. It's a single post and it's yellow. That would be one in the in this in the column. If you put zero, you get a white version of that same thing with one post. If you put two, you have two posts and it's white. And then if you put three, it'll be two posts and it'll be yellow. We won't have to move far from the SGPT tab to find our next one. Uh, what we're going to be changing is the type of ball used in the stadium. This is a very minor detail and most people would never notice it. Uh, but if you uh, want that level of immersion, 
then this is a, a cool feature. It's the SBSD tab. Again, it changes the type of football and there's five different options. So Oregon starts with this one. In the SBST column, you're gonna put a two. That would get you the Nike Vapor One ball. You can see, looks cool. It's Nike football. Um, it's the only Nike ball in the game. If you put a zero into that tab, you'll get the first of two Wilson ones. This is just a standard Wilson ball with the white laces in the gold lettering. Um, if you were to put a one in the tab, you're gonna go ahead and get another Wilson ball. This one is a black lettering, black laces, and it's one of these GST balls uh, that Wilson makes. So cool that the branding's there. These footballs look great, by the way. Um, if you put a three, remember two was Nike. Uh, if you put a three, you get an Adidas rifle ball. It's got the black lettering. It's got the white laces. It's a pretty clean looking football. Um, because we're with Oregon, we would probably stick with Nike no matter what. Uh, but we ended up just changing it to this final one, which is number four in that SBSD column. Uh, and that gets you an Under Armour uh, 695 football. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I was just changing everything. This is the one that I randomly chose. Again, from the column that we're in, the SBST, we're not going to have to move too far for our next change. This is the SFTY, which is the field type of the stadium. Uh, it just chooses between uh, grass and then the different types of turf. Now, with the revamped mod, I don't think that the type of turf can change all that much just because of the way that they have the fields kind of painted on. Um, but you can change between grass and turf. So we'll go ahead and load in with the grass field uh, and the turf fields and you can see the difference between them because again, like the footballs, it's a small difference. So in the SFTY column, uh, if you put anywhere from a one to six, you're gonna get a turf type field. You can see when the foot is hitting the ground, uh, those rubber pellets are flying up. Uh, if you put a zero, you'll get a grass field. And if you look carefully, it doesn't happen every footstep, but here, uh, his left foot, right before he plants and kicks the ball, you'll see a couple of things of grass shoot up uh, that just prove that it is grass. Uh, right here. So unless you're using a team builder team, that's pretty much the last thing that we'll do in the stadium tab. Uh, there might be some other small things here or there that you could do. Uh, actually, while we're thinking about it, there is a very obvious one. Uh, if you change your stadium, you're probably going to want to change the name for it. Uh, so if we scroll way over to the left, we can see uh, the stadium name. It's set as Autzen Stadium. We could change that to uh, the Autzen Gibby Dome or something if we wanted to uh, and save it and it would load in. Uh, alternatively, there's also, again, that seating capacity. Uh, you're going to want to change that just depending on how many you have. It doesn't really matter, but uh, it makes a difference uh, outside of the game when you're looking at, like, toughest places to play type of stuff or average attendance. So it just kind of matters for uh, the realism aspect, I guess. So, again, unless you're using a team builder team, uh, we're going to move on from the places and stadiums tab and we'll go to team data and teams and then we will scroll down and I can try to use the alphabet and we can find Oregon. And from here, we're going to change something that is not necessary, but can have some cool results. So there are six columns that we're going to be looking for. And unfortunately, they spread them out uh, throughout this. So it's kind of a pain, but uh, TBCB. TB2B, those two matter. That is the team builder, team color for your blue uh, and your secondary blue color. Uh, it's uh, RGB values. So right now we have a zero in this one. That means that there is going to be no blue. Uh, if every single one of them, if our red and our green were also uh, zeros, the color would be black. So what you're going to want is uh, some way to find out the RGB colors of either your school or something else uh and this can be useful in doing stadium stuff in that it changes a team color which means it changes what the fans will wear now it will also change team colored items like wristbands and elbow pads and stuff like that so if those are super important to your look you probably don't change this uh and you'll want to remember uh write down or type somewhere 
uh, what the values were before you change them so that you can change them back because otherwise it's just going to be a pain in the butt. Uh, but say you want to create a whiteout for your team, uh, like if you're a Penn State fan, you can actually do it using this method. So I have this uh, website. There's a link to it down in the description. If you scroll down, you can find an RGB type of generator. Uh, I only link to this website because it helps you find the decimal number for a color combination. So for instance, uh, this is kind of like goon green. Sure. Uh, this will come in handy when we skip to that team builder part, uh, but it's just convenient to have it both in the same place. So again, if you were wondering, black is just all zeros in your RGB and white is 255s across the board. So we're going to go for the white outlook uh, and see if it works. So we're going to change all those colors or all those values to 255. And again, uh, that's team builder colors. So we'll change both of these to 255. And then we have to look for TBCR and TBCG. That's for the red and green. I think green is over here. One of those is already white. So we will change the other one. And then where, how far do we have to scroll to find the one with the red colors? It's always kind of difficult because they all just look so similar. Here it is. TBCR 255 and 255. We will go ahead and hit, make sure that we get out of that. Make sure it's all incorrectly and we can go ahead and save that data. So Oregon's official team colors are now all white. Uh, there's no green or yellow. It's just white. Unrealistic, but for, you know, a one-off event, say you want to be like, okay, this is against our rivals. We want to wear, have all the fans in the stadium wearing the same color. Or maybe you want to set it all to pink and you want to have some sort of breast cancer awareness day for one of your games. You could do that. Now, the final thing that you need to change to make sure this works, and this is an important one because otherwise your fans won't change, is you're going to be looking for this UDBC column. Uh, it is right next to the team color blue. Uh, and you're just going to set that to one. And then again, you'll go ahead and save your file. So we'll go ahead and load in. And truth be told, I uh, did forget to do that initially. It took me a second. So I've already kind of loaded the file. And you can see now that Oregon, its background is white, uh, which is good news that should change to whatever color you have chosen. So we'll go ahead and load into this game. And all of the spots where normally it would show your team color are going to show up as white, uh, your play calling screen and all that. And as we load in, we can see uh, a lot of the fans, not all of them, because there are away fans, um, but pretty much all of the home fans are now wearing white. So we have a white out for the Ducks. We probably should have worn white uniforms to this game. Uh, it's just a little bit of chaos. So here is just like a look at the fans, uh, kind of lagging along. It's not, not running all that smoothly right now because I have a bunch of programs open to record this. Uh, but you can see aside from the, uh, the FCS fans, it's all white. So, uh, it worked. And let me just real quick, just for fun, let me load in, uh, a random color, uh, just to show that it's not just going to work as white. So I have changed it to hot pink, as you can see by the cleats and the scoreboard. And if we go into our instant replay, uh, we can see the fans are also all wearing hot pink. So, uh, you know, you could change those numbers to whatever you want and get whatever color you want. Uh, just remember again to keep uh, notes of the colors that your team originally had so that you can easily switch back to them and just get back to your normal team colors and have normal games. Uh, unless you just always want to have the same color uh, in the uh, in the stands. So that is going to be it for this video. There is a little bit more that you can do with team builder teams. Uh, you can change kind of what the field looks like and you can customize the end zones a little bit. Uh, but it does not really work well at all with teams especially with the college football revamp mod it gets rid of all the logos and any of the custom stuff any of the uh conference logos uh and unless you have the right team builder stuff in and you just do it on a normal team your logos at midfield will just be the ea sports logo so uh we're not going to cover that in this video 
Uh, if there's enough demand for it, I don't mind making a shorter second video. Uh, just going over that stuff, there's not a whole lot, but um, it could fill a few minutes. So if you've made it this far and you enjoyed what you saw, if maybe there's a chance that you will use these or at least think about using them, then please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you aren't already. Both of those things do such a tremendous job at helping this channel grow. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, the more people see the video, the bigger the channel gets, the more stuff that I can do, uh, the more frequently I can do it and the wider reach we can do. You know, I can branch out to Madden or FIFA or maybe 2K. Um, so there's a lot of sports games coming out. We probably will play some of them. Um, uh, which ones I decide to choose, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we'll do Madden yet because I would have to get a PS5 to get the next gen gameplay. Um, so, you know, maybe if the channel gets big enough, then I can get a PS5. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you enjoy the video, just please feel free to consider doing those two things. And while you're down there, you can head to the description where you will find links to all of the stuff that I covered in this video, as well as links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also going to be links to my Twitter, my community discord, and the college football revamp mod if you don't have that yet. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.